Good morning, Eden. I've got your sports recap from Sunday. The UMD softball team designated this weekend one for Mandy Matula weekend in honor of the late Bulldog alumna. They split the Saturday series with Southwest Minnesota State. Sunday's doubleheader was with Sioux Falls, and it took five innings before any sort of scoring happened. We'll go to the top of the sixth inning where Cougars' Brittany Broussard hits a fly ball. It goes foul, but Heather Wyack dives here and makes it. It's a highlight real play. She makes it in and out. Bulldogs now at bat. We go to the bottom of the six. Alexia Klaus for UMD with a shot to center. She bats in Jordan Rice. And finally, that's a run scored in the game. Then, same inning, Wojak with an RBI double down third baseline. She brings home Klaus. And those were the only runs in that game. UMD shut out Sioux Falls in game one, two to nothing. But split with the Cougars as in game two, the Bulldogs fell two to one. Meanwhile, at Wade Stadium, UMD Baseball, another doubleheader with Winona State. We join him in the bottom of the fifth. Brian Pierce firing to left center, batting home Kyle Singer to score. And that ties the score at three runs each. Then, Johnny Meyer driving to center. It's an RBI double. Bo Goff and Brian Pierce come flying home for the Bulldogs. And after that little play, the Warriors decide they need to make a pitching change. So they do that. Following that, they beat UMD 6-5 to five in Game 1. Game 2 is another matter. Bulldogs beat Winona State 9-3. to three. They're 3-4 three for four with the Warriors this weekend. Not bad. In the Major Leagues, Pirates visit the Brewers. Carlos Gomez hits a homer for 2, and that's it. Pittsburgh wins 10-2. And the Twins fell again to the White Sox 2-6. It's the off-season for hockey, but keeping your skills sharp is never a bad idea. The Northern Storm youth teams hosted their battle by the Bay tournaments, and they wrapped up Sunday. The under-14 championship pitting the Storm against the visiting Winnipeg Falcons all the way from Winnipeg. Second period, Storm's Lauren Donnellan shot broken up, but Jenna Reese takes a rebound off the back wall to score. One goal lead for the Storm. Then Donnellan on the run again. Bianca Zach has the save for the Falcons. Then we go to the third period of play where the Storm's here on a bender with a return to sender. The Falcons zone, she scores. Then Chloe Lund skates into traffic, rifles one, top shelf, three goal lead. That is a win for the Storm, and that's the championship for these girls. The Storm scored 35 goals over five games in the tourney. Their coach wants to teach them adaptability, and the girls, they're nearly speechless after this win. We prep, prep for each team based on what we think we can expose and what we think is our strong points. So, for instance, in this game, we're playing a bigger team, um, a little more physical than what we're usually used to, so we talked about how to, how to prepare for that and how to get open and how to, to get your chances, even though you're not going to have as much space as you're used to. Um, our team is very skilled. Or, mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> You know they love it. Ohio State University has named former UMD women's hockey player Jenny Potter as its new head women's hockey coach. She played four years at UMD, winning a national title in 2003, and still holds the program's all-time scoring record with 256 points. She also is a four-time Olympic medalist, one of those being a gold in the 1998 Nagano Games, and she was coaching at Trinity College and was drafted in the summer 2014 to the Boston Blades of the Canadian Women's Hockey League. And the Minnesota Wild has been placed for its first series in the first round of the Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup playoffs. Bryce is going to like this. Uh, he's our weekend meteorologist. The opponent is the St. Louis Blues. He's from St. Louis. These are the same Blues that beat the Wild Saturday night. This one, game one, is in St. Louis this Thursday at 8.30 p.m. In the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks came into Saturday with a shot in the playoffs, at the playoffs. To lock up that spot, though, they needed to take out another team from the Empire State. Enter the Nets. Brooklyn's finest came to town to play. We go to the first quarter where Chris Middleton forces a turnover and hits Michael Carter-Williams with the one-handed throwdown. He brings the Bucks within two, but the Bucks really take off after the half. Middleton with a give-and-go to Zaza Pachulia. He goes back door and gets the two-handed dunk. The Bucks went from the league's worst record last season to the playoffs this season. They won 96 to 73. Let's switch gears now and go to Augusta, Georgia. The Masters wrapped up yesterday. Jordan Spieth in position to be the second youngest golfer ever to win. Behind guess who? Yeah, it's Tiger. Didn't have a great day though. He hit a tree root there and kind of hurt himself there on the ninth. Uh oh. He's finished six under par. Now we're going to join Phil there. Mickelson over on the 15th hole. He's in the bunker, third shot on par five, and he decides he's going to chip it. And you know what he gets? An eagle. That's perfect. Not bad at all. He finished 14 under par. But 21-year-old Spieth, bogey tap on the 18th. He ties Tiger's finishing record. 
and he is the second youngest golfer to win the Green Blazer after Mr. Woods himself. And finally, if you're feeling like venturing off the beaten path, how about a fencing lesson? The Lotus Center in downtown Duluth features every Sunday at 2 p.m. fencing lessons with Chris Nelson. It's non-competitive, but it's an interesting sport because, sure, you get a leg and an arm workout, and you get to poke at everyone with a sword, but it's also described as mental chess. I mean, there's the physical aspect, just um, being able to do the moves, and it's, it's very physically uh, demanding, um, but it's also it's a mind game. You, know, you learn the moves, but then you have to outthink your opponent. That's all from Sports Eden. Back to you.